Hello you two, we are back with a very technical video today. In the last video I asked if you want to see a stage one map built from scratch using HP tuners and lots who said yes. So here we are, I'm going to take you through it. It might be a long video but we're going to go through every detail of what it takes to have a stage one map built from a standard map. Now, I wear my HP tuners t-shirt because why not? Perfect. <laughs> I... <coughs> <coughs> I have had COVID actually <clears> two <throat> weeks ago and I can't shake it off. But anyway, the um, HP Tuners saw one of my previous videos and sent me an email saying they sent me out some merch, they sent me a t shirt and some pens and stuff like that. So the video is not sponsored by Amberlock HP Tuners. If you want to sponsor me and throw me a load of cash and carry on, I'm not going to say no. So here we are then. We're going to film making this video. I'm going to put it all on the screen record so you're going to see the screen. We're going to go through everything in detail. There's going to be a lot of stuff where it's quite technical and I can't explain it all because it'll be too in-depth. But I know what needs changing and everything I understand fully I'm going to talk you through. But like I say, some is just too technical. Um, so let's fire up the screen recorder and let's get straight into it. Right, so here we are then HP tuners on the screen. So First thing we're going to start with is right up here, we're going to go into engine. <clears throat> now, this is a standard map I've downloaded off the car, so we're only going to change certain things. There's going to be a lot we're going to be skipping over. So we look at these top tabs here, general, obviously we don't need to change our idle. We're not going to change nothing within the idle. If I was to talk you through all of this, we'd be here for days. So where we're going to start is up here on airflow so this is where we're going to make our first changes and we're going to go through all systematically so we can look at maximum load now the one thing to remember is this is just building a base map and this will need tweaking and changing right but also a stage one map usually is around about 10 to 20 percent um, increase over standard so that's going to be a lot of the numbers right we're going to be using so when we look at this maximum desired load which we've clicked on here we have to change this. So when you do login and you see absolute load, this will have a relevance on it. So if we don't change this, we won't make any more power. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to add 15% to this, right? And we're going to highlight all of this. Now this is temperature based. So after 45 degrees of intake temperature, I will want the power to cut. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add 15%, which is 1.15 and we are going to multiply. So that's going to give us around about a 220% load. And like I say, once the intake temps get high, we want it to cut power. Um, some will go higher and keep it going for longer, but I'm not going to do that. So that is the first change, and that is our max load done. Next thing we're going to want to uh, change here is on the turbo, we've got our max load boost failure. So we've put in 220% in the um other columns so roughly so what we want to do here we want to put i'm going to put 230 percent so anything over that is going to register as 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 a failure so that's that change so under airflow this is all we are going to change right so i'm just editing the video and realized i missed out a big chunk so we're going to quickly look at this so after we did the airflow I only went to general, I missed out all of these other sub tabs. Suddenly now I'm looking back, I realise this. So we quickly cover it quick, right? So speed density, uh, don't change anything in there. Electronic throttle, you've seen me talk about that in a previous video. I've left that a standard, although I would have no issue with putting 4,000 at 100% there because it's only a minor change and you're still not in full power or full throttle until uh, 4000 rpm so that's the only change i consider there although i haven't done it in this map the variable camshafts the vvt i haven't changed any of that left at standard um control and the big one that i forgot to show you was the maximum map i raised the boost so it could go to 1.5 bar if need be um and it didn't even get there but it's got the option to get there if it, if it wants to. So I should have covered that actually. And then in turbocharger, we change the pressure ratio limit. I completely forgot about that. So we add 20% to uh, to this table 
as well so stupid old me it's this so is a lot in this and i wrote the notes and i started doing a lot of it off memory without consulting the notes as, as i was going through I spent a lot of time preparing in this as well and still got it wrong so so yeah that gets changed and i think that's pretty much it everything else um i pretty much covered so back to the video then we move on to exhaust we're not going to change nothing in that i'm going to leave all of that temperature after exhaust we're going to go into fuel so we have all the sub tabs underneath here general we're not going to change anything in there oxygen sensors i'm not changing anything in there the open loop base not changing anything in there what we're going to change is our power enrichment so this is under the driver demand here so this is where we do need to make fueling changes <clears throat> right so what i'm going to do first just to make I show you a simple way of how we can set up the afr there's different ways of doing it right this is a percentage of torque some will leave it like that some will change i'm going to change it because it's easier what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this and um, because it's in lambda for a minute i'll change to afr in a second we'll put that as one lambda so all of them are one what I'm going to do, if I click that now, we will go to an AFR of 14.7. So what I want to do now is I want to change my row axis. So we're going to go do this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this here to 65%. 65%. And I'm going to change this to 10% <clears throat> so then we're going to interpolate sideways so interpolate means it'll blend from there to there okay so that's what we left with there now so once we get to 65% of our torque we're then going to go into power enrichment so this is the standard fueling so we're going to make some changes uh, to that and I'll run you through them now right so I'm going to start here and we're going to go in this column 11.7 just to be safe on our first tune and um, we can amend that later so we can go 11.7 from there there you are so then we get our 12 volt and then we'll go 12.5 there and we will leave the rest of that standard now so let me say some people might think that's on the rich side and perhaps it is but for a base tune that'll be fine i know we're going to be good and we can amend it later if needs be so that's our fueling so what happens now is below this area here we're going to run at one lambda because you can be on light throttle like load but as you get on the power pass 65 percent we're going to go into our power enrichment and that's where you'll see that afr so next temperature control i'm going to leave all of that standard now we're going to get into our rpm limits so let's make this a bit bigger so this is all of your your rev limiter so you've got your fuel cut offset i'm going to leave that as it is and now we'll get into changing our rpm so i'm going to go for 6800 So we're going to do this through all of these. Then we've got our base. We're going to do 6800 on that. Like so, then we do the same with our short term 6800. Keep pressing it, then it's done. I'll stop getting dinging because I'm getting all buttons. So our temperature cutoffs are going to leave the same. Our transient, we're going to change that 6800. Knock safety, we want that to run right up 6800. So limp mode, we will leave that as it is at 6,000. And our offset limiter, so this is our soft limiter, 250 RPM is before the full limiter. That's our offset. Right, so transient, we don't touch nothing in there. So the next thing we come into is our spark. So the first thing I want to do is show you this, your fuel knock limit. So you have your base ignition time and be a knock limit is an amount of uh, ignition time and it will add if it doesn't sense any knocks so on a base tune starting off 
I want to make changes to that and put it down. So it's based off your AF well. So it's in it's in lambda. So roughly we're going to be between 0.8 and 0.85 of a lambda. So we're going to be running in in this column. So I want to drop this down by 50%. So it's having less impact on our base um, ignition table. All of this, I'm going to highlight all of that. And what I'm going to do is reduce it by 50%. So 0.5 times. So that will have half of the impact on the ignition table as what it would if it's left alone. So then we come to our base ignition table. Now here again is reference to engine load. When you look at your logs, you'll see absolute load. Like I said, we change it to 220%. So what that means, we're going to leave this at 210 anything above 210 percent will act upon sorry this bottom line here so really when you're in full run we're only going to be concerned with these two columns here the 150 and 210 percent we're not going to change anything else because in the normal driving conditions it'd be perfectly fine left alone right so how i do this is i go from six and a half thousand in this column here down to 2520 I'm going to add 10% so 1.1 we do there and then we go times so that's 10% and then just this column on its own here I want to add another 10% I said I've, obviously I've already done this I'm not making this up the top of my head and I, I know it works so when we're in that area that's going to be the ignition we'll see there now we have to make changes on this light what I'm going to do is change this column here to a six six degrees of timing roughly there and i know at 3000 rpm we're going to want zero roughly zero ignition timing there what i'm going to do then is interpolate to blend all of their numbers together so I click this symbol here and that will interpolate them we need to make some changes down here as well Right, so then we get our optimum spark. Now, optimum spark, um, some people seem to think it's the maximum ignition you can hit um, under perfect conditions. Um, but apparently from what I've been researching, it's more like what they call an urgency table. So what that does is you might not see these numbers here, but it's how fast the ignition time will advance based off your base table. What I'm going to do is take the 210% uh, column down the bottom here and we're going to do a multiplication on that and we're going to multiply by 10%. So 1.1 times 10% and then what I'm going to do is interpolate that right the way up to the 50% line. So what that does is it makes those numbers a smooth transition from there to there. So that is the optimum spark. And the same for a second fuel. Well. Times 1.1. Blend that down to the 55%. And that's done. Right, so then on to our optimum spark, MBT spark monitor. Right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to highlight all of these three columns here. And we're going to multiply this by 5%. So 1.05. That's how much we're going to add to that. All right. So that is all our ignition done. Like I said, this is safe. I reduced the knock limit. So it's not going to advance any timing on top of your base. Other than I think it's about one and a half degree. All right. So in the retard, this is how much your ignition timing can retard. I'm not going to change any of this. So the maximum retard, um, as you can see, is these numbers here. And how that works, how it gets to that number, is based on your knock retard amount. So if it senses knock, depending on the knock intensity here, this is what it removes at a time. So if your knock intensity is severe, you can remove up to 2.25 degrees of ignition timing at a time. So what it will do, it will remove that. If it still detects knock, it will remove it again. And it will do it until it gets to this maximum here. So you can increase this maximum wherever, but I mean, 15 degrees, 16 degrees in the mid range, 12 up top is uh, more than enough to uh, safeguard your engine, really. There, providing your base tables are not ridiculous, of course. If your base tables are sky high, then you might need more 
reduction on that so we leave all of that standard it sparked well we don't touch that and the main thing is for me i do not touch knock sensors i will leave all of that alone so you've got your knock threshold so the cylinder uh, are in group so we've got two knock sensors on the car and they can one sensor monitors uh cylinder one and two and the other one does three and four so this is your group group zero <coughs> and group one you've then got pre-ignition thresholds i don't touch none of that you've got your knock sensor gain so just to give you a look of in the knock threshold if you click on the group block you can see that these num this is rpm across the top obviously these numbers here are voltages so the sensor will give out a voltage reason re reading based off the the noise it's basically a microphone of what it's picking up in the engine so my preference is leave it all alone in my opinion it doesn't need it so then we go on to a torque model and we go to look at our optimum torque right down to a torque to loads this is really important because the way the mapping works on the st is it's going to translate the torque settings into an air load of what the turbo is going to pump into the engine so it's all clever maths so if we go into our optimum torque so you'll notice here on this side now there's three columns for the 220 percent load so you can play with that and make changes for stage one i'm going to leave that alone so when we get the 220 percent load all of these will be the same basically just like it is for standard so so what I'm going to do here is take all of them and I am going to multiply them by 10%. 1.1. Like I said earlier, a lot of this, when you think of a stage one tune, it is 10 to 20% you're adding to the car. So that's why a lot of these figures I've personally come to is based off that factor of what you're adding. Right, so that's all we're going to change here. Everything below this 180%, we're going to leave that as standard for now. Optimum torque, secondary fuel, we'll do the same with that. Go right up to 110%, and we're going to multiply that by 10%. So 1.1 again times, and that then is our secondary fuel done. Torque to load. Now, this is an interesting one torque to load. It says this converts a desired indicated torque to a desired relative air load. So, this is the calculation then of how it's going to take the math from your your load into how much your turbo is going to blow into your engine then right so on the 45 percent of engine torque line we're going to highlight all of that and we're going to multiply it by 10 percent 1.1 times and then what we're going to do is we're going to interpolate all the way down to the 25 percent line so we're going to highlight all of that and that will then blend it in so there you are. that then is our torque to load down so that's the, the torque model general monitoring we're not going to change any of that we're not going to change any of the loss either right so now we come into our torque management indicated torque limits so we have to change our max and our max over boost so the torque limits on the car we want to increase this by 20 percent so i'm going to highlight everything there and just add 1.2 20 percent so we do the same then we've got a maximum over boost and that one we're going to increase also by 20 percent and that is them done so then we get into driver demand this is an interesting one now because this is all of the control for power through each gear so in a standard car you know first gear is limited doesn't have full power second gear has got a bit more power but it's still limited and you don't start feeling the full power until third on so we're going to change all of these um <clears throat> but we're only really going to concentrate on the 90 to 100 percent areas here for drive we're going to add 20 percent to this column so this is in newton meters so this is not going to be the numbers you're going to see because as we go up the gears the numbers are massive so remember the ECA works in um, and newton meters of load and does all of this mass and calculation but some of this is not re relatable really to anything you'll actually see from the car so don't get too carried away with, with what we're looking at right 1.2 times and what i'm going to do then is i'm going to blend down into the 80 percent so that's changed the amount of torque that 
the drive request can make. Then we're going to go through the individual gears. So first gear, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put, put, put that up 20%. And then I'm going to interpolate that to there. And then we're going to go through all of the gears. So second gear now. I want to go for second gear. Second gear now we're going to go to 25%. Now I could add more power to first and I could add more power to second. I could give it the full beans, but I, I don't mind um, putting a bit of restriction because you don't you don't need it all in my opinion, but that's personal preference. I would imagine most mappers really, they just they just lay out everything from low down. So that's second. Then we're going to get into third. Now we're going to start doing 30%. So 1.3. And then we're going to do the same. Then we're going to interpolate across the fourth gear. Same. 1.3. Now I'm doing this really quick, right? You, if, if I actually commit an error while doing this, it's because I'm rushing through it. This is not the map that's actually going to run the car. I'm just mimicking it because I've actually made the map. I'm taking my time doing it. This is just video purposes. So if you spot an error, like I don't um, interpolate properly or do it, don't worry. This is not what's going on the car. This is more about an education of showing what, what the process is, not for you to actually copy the exact numbers. Although, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Now, six gear, I'm going to go 20% extra because. Do we need all that load and power in six? Uh, I don't know. So we're gonna have six with just a 20% increase. So then we've got to get into our launch. Launch we're gonna do by 30%. So this is quite impeccable, I think you get the idea by now. 1.3. And then overboost. Now we want to get rid of overboost in the sense we don't want that active like it is in the standard car, so we kind of make that um redundant here. We'll we'll whack it up. So I'm going to take the whole table and pull that up by 25%. <clears throat> right, so yeah, stick that up by 20%. Now there is a weird area in the middle. I don't fully understand why they've got lower numbers of 4,000 on the standard car, but we can interpolate and take that smooth that out so it's blended in right so we're getting closer to the end now right pretty much that is the basics of the map done so what we're going to look at now you can see here we've got engine diagnostics so this is another important one we've got to go into so in general um we're not going to touch that so in airflow we have a maximum tip error so this is relating to when it considers that there's an overboost so we're up in the boost we want to make some some changes in in you right so what we're going to do here this one is set on ps psi you can go through the other settings as well but i'm going to leave it on psi because it's easy so i'm going to change this one right we can go to 10 psi here and i'm going to interpolate that as far as this we got a little bit more error in whether it'll trigger a warning on overboost right so that's that done misfire here we're not gonna get into that exhaust now this is the auto to be triggered from um sport cat or a d cat so i'm going to disable that even though i'm standard just if ever i change it i have to come back in now this is where you can disable all warnings so you can see you've got everything in here a lot of them are disabled from the factory anyways as, as you can see let me just make that bigger but yeah it's all of you your codes really and uh, you can alter them there's different things you can do um go here yes, so you can have them like no management light um some management lights, blah 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 anyway well you can see all what you can do there but uh we're not going to touch any of that everything is going to stay completely standard in there so we won't change that at all Right, so then we got to get into the fuel system. So this here is the high pressure desired. So the homogenous is the high pressure fuel pump. And we can up that after 3000 to 160 bar. So I'm going to highlight this. And in there, we're going to have a little bit more pressure, 160 bar. We're not going to go crazy. So in the upper RPMs and split injection, we'll do the same. We'll this down to 3000 here we give that 160 bar and then what we have to do is your maximum desired so this is the maximum pressure your fuel pump can can reach so what we'll do there we'll um 
we'll add 10 to that so it'll be slightly over if we add 10 so 162 so we're going to go up to 160 bar where there's two two bar in that so that is the max that the pump will go to now they do tend to overshoot sometimes you can't always perfectly control them and that's it fuel pump there we're not going to make any changes to that the other things that are within the map just to show you so is the fan um, you can see here the fan comes on at 105 C a lot of people wonder when that kicks in um, auto it's funny it's got auto stop camera battery died then just as I was starting to talk about auto stop auto start stop in the map oh, this has been a, a long video anyway what I did say in at the end of that was I wonder what would happen if we switch it on I've never tried it because we don't have start stop but that basically is the end of the map I've covered everything there now the one thing I do want to stress right at this moment I haven't watched that back and doing it in the heat of the moment i may have put an error of numbers in somewhere so i as a disclaimer i'm not telling you to go and copy that map i think if you want this map and you've got hp tuners i'll email it to you all is left to do now for you to see anyway is me putting that map on the car going off for a drive and seeing what it's like so let's go and do it right then people that's it the map is all loaded on car started up that's always a good point so what i'm going to do now is i plug four scan in i don't need to take you through the loading procedure of the map i think i've showed a bits before and there's plenty of that on the internet anyway so let's go have a test drive see what it feels like Right, so first log done and the car's running well now if you look at um, throttle we can see that's gradually coming in and the wastegate duty cycle is coming in nice and strong at the start and then level it out the ignition timing is a little low through here so the car don't feel quite as quick as it can so see where it's like flat lining for a bit and then it'll come up then it'll flat line so i'm a little low on the timing what that means is it's flatlining because it's waiting for the next point where it can start increasing again in the in the table um boost is looking good we had a peak of 1.41 and um afr i think might need a little tweak it's not bad might be a bit too rich on the top end but um we can look at that the math is 159 so it's definitely more to gain from it but as a first revision I can't complain with that so really what this needs is a, is a couple more tweaks so a little bit more work on the ignition timing um because you're not going to nail it in the first one so what i would do with that is know the knock limit i'd probably let that go back to the standard knock and see how that goes it's going to pick up a bit of extra power from that um <clears throat> maybe be able to work on the boost a little bit more and get that math reading up a little bit higher we are on a standard air box with a standard air filter which um i haven't even checked the condition of the standard filter to be honest though it could be uh, <laughs> i had the box out yesterday the air box but i didn't flip the filter out to see how clean it was so that could be restricting us a bit 159 gs i think we should be seeing um a little bit more than that um but like i said first revision is definitely improved money can pick up a, a touch more boost and uh definitely more ignition but it's safe you could chuck 95 run in this i'm pretty certain with that ignition timing 
and um, and this car will be absolutely fine. The other thing I've noticed as well is the absolute load. We are at in 219%, so we're right up on our limit. Um, I could probably raise that a touch more as well. So these are little tweaks you work on, but they, I would call this my my base map as such now. So we've got uh, a good starting point for this car. But I'm not going to take you through the whole process. Um, because it would be massively time consuming but you get the main idea of what happens in setting up a base tune obviously if he was at the tuning shop or the dyno they'd probably have this base map just like a pre-made put that on and what you've seen him doing is making alterations tweaks the timing getting a bit more boost changing the load uh, and things like that suiting it to your own car so i'm going to go and drive a little bit more on this now get a bit more data logs so thank you very much for watching everybody i appreciate the time you've taken to stick around for this video and uh, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and bye. Even if I do say so myself. <laughs>